Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In this video I would like to go through a workflow uh, how to, uh, on how to export meshes out of Unreal Engine and import them into a program such as Blender and where in which you can use the mesh with the textures um, and be able to use it in your own project. Now this is a very important uh, workflow because it allows you to go on the Unreal Engine marketplace, find a environment pack or a mesh pack that you, you, you like and you can export it and you can export the textures as well in a very straightforward way but it's important that you actually know how to set it up back into your own program and it's also important to know how to export everything out of Unreal so anybody who's struggling with this uh, you'll find that it is quite easy once you look at my video obviously uh, but um, the, the idea here is uh, you can go and download stuff off the marketplace you can uh, find a lot of free content especially things from uh, um, um, you know, mega scans. You can go and get stuff from uh, the actual, uh, you know, people that sell uh, these assets, and then you can use them in whatever project you want. And I think that's a very powerful, a very powerful way of um, working. Um, it sh you shouldn't be constrained only to Unreal Engine, I don't think, even though they provide a lot of items, obviously a lot of things on their platform. Uh, but you should be able to use them in your in creative ways on your own um, scenes, as I've said, such as in Blender. Um, and uh, this is what I'm going to show you. So let's uh, let's begin. Also, guys, if you would like to support my channel and you have a pet and you also live in the UK or the USA, uh, you can head o head over to my uh, channel, Blue Nova Designs. Uh, it's in the description below. And I can get a pet portrait made for you on uh, cushions, on fleeces, on canvases, uh, all sorts of products. We um, do uh, all sorts of designs. All you need to do is just choose a portrait, upload your pet photo and place your order. Uh, as I've said, we've got canvases, cushions, uh, frames, uh, framed art, uh, mugs or uh, fleeces. Um, and they're all very, very good products. Uh, if you guys really like to support me, then please head on over and uh, order one. Uh, thank you, so let's begin. So for those of you who uh, would like to get this um, pack uh, that I've got, all you need to do is go on, on to your Epic Games uh, launcher, go into Unreal Engine and uh, select the marketplace, and in the search box just type in factory. This will then open a um, list of assets that have the name factory in them and you'll be able to find this particular pack um, somewhere around here yeah this is the one and as you can see it's a free uh, it's, it's free for you to, to get and the um, assets are being shown into these photos as i said there's a lot of assets into this pack and once you've uh, downloaded, so once you've downloaded, you can create the project and then open it in Unreal. And I've got it open over here. Uh, it will take some time for it to load. This is a, it's a massive project, but once it's loaded, it will run a lot smoother and a lot faster. Uh, once you're inside, you may want to select certain meshes and start uh, fiddling around with them and, and you know see what you want to get out of Unreal. So in this particular scenario, I've selected this uh, particular machine here, uh, which is a assembly line box as it's called over here and we want to start exporting it so the first thing that we want to do is we want to right click it into the in, in here in the outliner and then we've got an option where it says browse to asset and what that does is it uh, causes the um, content browser to go to this asset that we have into the inside Unreal. So we found the mesh we can right click it and then we have an option in here called asset actions uh, when you go over that, you'll have a few options in here. We select the export option and then it will ask us where do we want to um, uh, basically where do we want it to, to be exported. So I'm just going to leave it in downloads uh, just like that and this is the name of it. And we have a few other um, you know types of files to export as an OBJ, as an Unreal object uh, text or whatever. I've never used those. But we're just going to do as an FBX and then we're going to press save on the keyboard and then we have a few more options in here but again I'm just going to press export. And that's you know that that's finalized we now have the mesh export that of unreal which was quite straightforward now bear in mind that this has different LODs and what it, what has happened here is um, unreal has exported all the LODs of this mesh which is quite neat uh, now we want to get its textures and the textures can be found on the right side over here these are the materials that it's using so what you want to do at this point is if you press this um, uh, you know magnifying glass over here it will 
take you into the content browser over to where the material is and that's you know that's um, something that we wanted to see if we double click the material a new panel will be opened which I can bring over here and this is the material itself and these are all the maps that are being associated with it so at this point what you want to do is you want to find these textures over here in order to export them out of Unreal. So by pressing the magnifying glass again it will open them in the content browser and in this particular scenario it's so you know it so happens that all these meshes are actually one two three four five. So I'm going to select each of these so that's all the five meshes from from this list and I can right click and then I'll have an option in here to, to say bulk export and then I'm gonna go back into downloads I'm just gonna make a new folder um, texture set and then I'm just gonna go inside and select folder and now all the textures have been exported of Unreal which is you know quite simple now as you can see some of these um, uh, some of these um, materials in here for example one of them is ORM which uh, means that it's a it's a texture that's going to be combined um, and it's going to, uh, to uh, include ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic. So we're, we're, when we go into Blender, we're going to have to separate the RGB of this uh, map in order to give us all the uh, maps that we need. So let's uh, head on over to Blender now. Um, now that we're in Blender, we're going to do the unthinkable thing, which is to delete the default cube, camera and light, of course. And once that's deleted, we're going to go into File and then press the Import button and select the FPX. Uh, we're going to navigate to the folder where we've uh, saved the asset, which is here. And this is the asset itself. Now, like I've told you before, uh, it does contain some, you know, all the different LODs of the mesh. So that's the lowest poly version right there. Uh, actually, if we if we turn on, if we let's go into shaded mode, and then let's just turn on wireframe. At this point, you can see which one is more detailed and which one is lacking uh, detail. But in this particular scenario, they all sort of seem to be quite close. But this is the high poly, so we're just going to use that one uh, really. It, it's fine. Um, and then the materials themselves have been added in as well in here but we don't obviously we don't have the maps yet so let's just take the wireframe off and now we're going to create a new window and we're going to bring in our we're going to open our shader editor and this is what we've got in here which is not great obviously we need more maps to get everything sorted so i'm just going to delete this normal map here as it doesn't actually work and let's begin bringing in the maps so I'm now in the folder where the textures are. Uh, let's just open them, and these are the uh, all the maps that we have. So we've got a base color, we've got the um, emission, we've got a mask, but again, I don't, I'm not really sure why it's called that, but obviously it's going to affect something in the mesh. And then we have an assembly line box, an assembly line ORM. So let's just bring in the basic color. I'm just gonna drop it in there, and let's connect it to the base color of our mesh. And as you can see, this is well, you guessed it, the base color of this mesh. Um, at this point, we want to bring in the normal, let's say. So let's just bring in the normal over here. Again, we're going to drop that straight in here. And this will give us the normal map that we wanted. Uh, oddly enough, I do seem to get a, be getting a bit of artifacting around here, but we'll see. Um, I think that may be to do with the view. So let me just try and clip this, maybe go to, sorry, 10,000, something like that, and then 0, 0 0.001. No, still hasn't fixed it. Very interesting, interesting stuff. But yeah, let me just try and go to object um, and then shade smooth. No, doesn't seem to be affecting it that much. Oh well, we'll see once we add uh, all the maps and, and see how that looks like. So I've just switched my uh, normal map to non-color to make sure you do that so it doesn't actually um, it doesn't actually show properly. And then we want to bring in the, um, we've got this, as I said, we've got the um, emission map. So let's bring that over as well. Um, the emission map in order to connect it you may you want to add a new shader so you want to add a, an add shader you want to also add a emission map 
we connect this over into here and then the emission into the shader the principal bvsf bsdf sorry in the emission the add shader and then we've that's that's the that's the setup for it uh, i'm not really sure where the emission is coming from it may just be these two buttons but if we play around with the strength um, well, we were we should have been able to see it, but we haven't got the bloom activated, so that's where it is. So I'm just gonna put that back to one, which is fine. Um, now we want to bring in some more maps, so let's just bring the ORM, which is the more interesting um, mesh to bring. So we'll leave that as an RGB because that's what we need, and then we're going to bring in a separate, sorry, a separate. RGB channel we're gonna put our color into the image and then we're going to uh, you know we've got the ambient occlusion which is the R uh, color the G represents roughness and B represents metallic so let's just bring in a mix RGB uh, node and with that in, in there we're just gonna add the uh, roughness and the metallic in it and then we're gonna bring this into our roughness our roughness channel. Uh, this is what we get. Honestly, I have no idea what's up with this artifacting. And uh, that's the problem. Right, okay, so now we've got it properly set up. Uh, we can play with the FAC, um, you know, for the FAC uh, value of this to in order to uh, make it more uh, metallic or more rough. Um, there are, you know, you, you want to leave this as a mix, not a multiply or anything else, just as a mixture, as a as a mix. But there are um, different ways that you can approach this. You know, get different results on it. One thing that you can do is you can add a um, in inverse, uh, in, sorry, an invert um, over here, and we're going to do the invert on the metallic. Um, so. We want the uh, B letter to go through here and then through in here like that, so it feeds it feeds through like that, which will then fix our mesh a lot nicer. But you, you can see that now that it's actually go looking quite okay. Um, and then the last mask that there is to add is a it's, well, it's, it's sorry, the last map is this mask thing. Uh, which in this particular case I'm not entirely sure what it's for um, because I'm not I wasn't able to actually find anything missing in the mesh uh, when I played around with it so we're just gonna leave that for now now what we want to do is we want to go back into our materials for this object and as you can see we added everything on the M1 assembly line box now the decals uh, we don't actually have um, anything for this material so um, what happens is we, we need to bring the other maps for this so the decals are probably going to be these parts over here um hopefully there's not another mesh hiding in there no there isn't okay so we're just going to go back into unreal and when you look over here you've got element one and this is for the decals that we were talking about so we're going to press our magnifying glass and then double click the material and then a magnify glass again and this is showing us that we've got some decals over here and then we've also got all of these to go with it we're going to right click them and then select asset actions and bulk export and we're going to just use the same folder so select folder uh, they're all exported now so we can head on back to blender um, i'm just going to delete as i said the normal map actually i'm going to delete all the nodes i'm going to go back to this material and then select everything from here um, then control C to copy go back to this material delete that and just add this in and then connect it now obviously the maps are incorrect so this is the point where we need to open again and, and just select the maps that are uh, you know for the decals so BC for decals and I think there's some more elements that get updated not just that um again this one we want the orm for decals um and then this mask thing as i said i don't know what it's doing i don't know if we have an emission have we got an emission yeah we do so we're just gonna add that and you can see the the emission map over there and then we've got the normal uh which the decals do have one as well just make sure you switch it back to non-color and that's it we've now added the decals in there 
Um, okay, so then the next line in here is this one. Same thing, you want to select it over here, press the magnifying glass, double click it, find the maps by magnifying glass again, and you found them. And this one doesn't have an emission, which is fine. Again, asset action, um, export, bulk export, and then select folder and they're being exported. So this moves quite quite quickly, um, I would say. So it's not it's definitely not time consuming once you once you did the first material. But again, this also is because the uh, asset pack that I've got is so well um, you know so well established. So there wasn't any really any particular uh, particular problems. In this instance, I'm just going to delete the emission as we don't need it for this one. Um, and now I've got line box. Um, sorry, it's line color. So that's the basic color, which I think it's just updates some stuff inside here. So let's just, yeah, as you can see, it updates this track over here. This is what this material is for. Um, and then I'm going to change the ORM. But you basically you get the idea, and this is this is well, that's that's the important thing that you you understand what the idea of this is and what, how to how to do it. Um, and once you added everything, again, there's one more material to do in there, but we're just going to skip that. Once you added everything, then your mesh is ready to use just like you were able to use in Unreal. Obviously, if you want to animate it and so on, that's fine. And then, you know, you can just go on and, and scale it to whatever sort of, um, whatever you need for your project and so on. Obviously, you can do a lot of modifications to it. I'm not really sure why this is bugging around, why, you know, why I get these, um, these artifacts here. Um, it could be because I've edited these values. Yeah, so you see, it, it really depends on how far away you are from it, but it can be fixed uh, with a proper camera in place as well. So I hope you guys found this um, video useful and that it was um, you know, going quite okay for you. Uh, just as a final note, I've realized I haven't actually um, sorted out the ambient occlusion um, node. So um, I'm just going to quickly do that because we obviously got the R channel here that we've not um, so added in any way. So I've got the base color over there. Now I just uh, need to, um, as I said, bring in my ambient. Uh, so what I want to do now is add a color ramp. Um, I'm just going to put it over here and I want to connect my R a channel over to the color ramp as well. Then I want to add a math node and actually let me just duplicate this. So I'll make two math nodes and I'll switch them both to uh, multiply. And then I'm going to put the color um, in one of the values over in, um, well, actually, no, I didn't need a multiply. I needed a mix RGB in there. <laughs> Right, so mix RGB and a math node, and I'm gonna take the color, put it into color one, take the color ramp and put it in color two, and this can go into our base color now. And then I want to get my, and then also don't forget to put this over to multiply. And then I'm going to put the color ramp as well in the second value over here, and then add that into the specular channel as well. So this will give us some ambient occlusion. Um, obviously, you can start toying around with the settings of it and just see what you get. Um, it's really, well, it's really up to you based on your preferences. Uh, but uh, yeah, that will be the full node setup for um, Blender. So from Unreal Engine to Blender, you can pretty much apply the same methodology to anything that you export out of Unreal, but it really depends on how the, ma how the maps were uh, set up. Uh, it, it's, you know, we're lucky that this environmental pack that I've just used has such clean, um, you know, su such a clean setup available. But the um, mega scans also have a very nice setup as well. So uh, I hope you guys found this uh, video, as I said, useful and that you enjoy it. Please like, please leave a like, subscribe and comment if you enjoy the content, if you would like to see more from me. And uh, well, I'll see you guys in the next uh, video. So see ya.